Get up, get to it, bro. What the f get to it. Come on now. <laughs> okay, and we are live for another Teaching Tuesday. Uh, I just noticed that my camera is a little bit off. Luckily, I can just drag and drop it, which is nice. And let me set up the chat in here as well. Wow, so unprepared, my guy. There we go. Uh, perfect. So, uh, I guess welcome to Teaching Tuesdays. Uh, this is a weekly segment on ArtWad where we usually do uh, some type of a short lesson at first. And then after that, uh, we focus on feedback and sometimes we just have fully feedback focused sessions, but it's usually based on those two parts. Uh, and you would have realized though, is I normally do the intro and you've, you've just, you know, well, it's wow. because I am, wow. it's, it's, okay. I am on the, I am on the camera. Okay. There's a little, maybe I'll do like, maybe oh. I'll like spe open my mouth and then you can lip sync. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay. Like uh, a radio, but... like you, you don't see in, in, in Lilo and Stitch where like Stitch just opens his mouth when he's got his hand on the recorder and the music comes out. You've seen that film, right? Yes, when I was very little. Oh, I think I did. Sorry, okay, I'm, yeah, I'm, a, I'm a bit young, but um, I'm not a boomer like you. I'm not like 29 or something. Um, oh my God. Wow. Do we need to watch on YouTube to see feed? What does that mean? Oh yeah, I no, can turn no, on no. sharing on Discord. <laughs> um, this is completely normal. Okay, so <laughs> all right, I shared on Discord. So <clears throat> for this lesson, uh, Ellie had the genius idea, and it's actually a good idea. Uh, she came up. Or was it, was it you, Ellie, that came up with the topic, or was it a suggestion? Oh my god, um, I can't remember. <laughs> Maybe both. Anyway, the topic is. I, I want the credit, so I'm just gonna say. <laughs> Ali, Ali's yeah, yeah. genius idea is the, um, the topic is stylizing faces, and uh, Ooh, I like it. I have a broad idea of what I want to cover here, um, and I, I think I want to approach it from <clears throat> sort of two um, dimensions, I guess. I want to talk a bit about shape, uh, which is I think the the more obvious approach, but I, I actually think the the biggest value. Uh, would be to talk about actually stylizing form and i think that's going to be interesting but <clears throat> just to start off with um when it comes to stylizing in general uh, i guess another word to use it could uh, be like like exaggerating i think i think that's fair enough to say that the idea when it comes to stylizing in this context isn't for example to to uh do a specific kind of aesthetic, like a cartoon aesthetic, but more so just about like exaggerating shapes. So, so that's the uh, the subject here. And um, when it comes to faces in particular, uh, we have, I think, two big ways of exaggerating shape um, without form. Again, and the first one is simply to just use shape language. I'll use very short. Uh, this is shape language here. And what that means is that, as with any kind of design, um, we can base uh, our shapes on a, a specific characteristic, uh, and that will give the whole design visual cohesion. And the characteristic doesn't necessarily... Uh, okay, I moved my chat. It's not okay. The technical difficulties will are expected. Uh, but uh, the, the characteristic doesn't necessarily have to be to completely limit yourself to just a, a specific type of primary shape. So we're not necessarily just talking about like using um, rectangles or using triangles, but more so talking about um, using like generally blocky shapes or using generally sharp shapes or using generally round shapes. And um, the I think that's the, the better way to approach it so that you don't limit yourself completely to, to a type of shape. So, for example, if I'm drawing a face here and I want to stylize it based on any any type of uh, shape design, I don't necessarily have to make it uh, all 90 degree angles here. I can do whatever I like within like this broad idea. So let's say I make the shape of the, the overall face something like this, and then I can maintain maybe that idea. Maybe I'll use this sort of like tapering rectangle mostly. And that can work, uh, but I, I don't have to like <laughs> necessarily limit myself too much. And I can also sort of have elements that stand out as well. So I think a good um, parallel to this is just thinking about 
character design in general and and sort of comparing those and and there are analogies and, and the broad ideas of character design apply to portraiture as well especially like um, coming up with likenesses so the, the broad idea here is that this initial um, step in this initial limitation creates cohesion but then within that limitation we can um, deliberately change the shape and create a type of an accent uh, and that's going to be less easy and, and less sort of uh, obvious to do because you do have facial structures that are already sort of I guess established and they have a certain form and there's anatomy to them so it's going to be more difficult to do that but you could as an example um, instead of let's say blocky um, maybe we can take a characteristic like wide so that, that's even more abstract than, than necessarily blocky because any of these can be wide and I can go in here, and these are very exaggerated examples just to, just to show the point and show the idea. And so I'll use wide both in the overall head shape, and then I'll also use it in spacing. So say that the eyes are wide apart, maybe I could also make these kind of wide. And then if I want to create a specific kind of, um, um, I guess, in this context, focal point might not be the perfect example, but create some interest within this overall idea, I can, let's say, make a very narrow nose. And I guess in this case, the nose would be very fitting for this because it is, by nature, the, the longest structure, or, or I guess the tallest structure that you have on the face. And then I can maintain my broadness, maybe even make the cheeks like really, really broad. So those would be, I think, the two uh, ideas within shape design or, or shape language, the um, primary shape and then the accent shape. Um, but as I mentioned, when it comes to this uh, shape category, we can also specifically for faces um, think about proportions in general as well. Because uh, the viewer is so in tune with what uh, what kind of generic or what kind of average expected proportions of the face are, <clears throat> changing those proportions up, I think, has a larger visual impact than if we're designing like a creature or something like that. <clears throat> so within, uh, I guess that could be within this idea, the, the idea that you have established, and I don't think there's really any necessarily point to go over this because it's like very uh, common knowledge, but you have these established proportions on the face. So, of course, the, the eyes are generally going to be midway through. There's this one-third division to the, the nose and the eyebrows, and then the eyes uh, themselves as well are one eye uh, spaced apart, and they also often have one eye to the side as well. So this might be the generic proportions that we're working with, and the ears are between the brows and the nose. Um, and then within these proportions, or, or based on these proportions, you can make changes without even um, touching really on any shape ideas. So even if I was just to go in here and change the, just copy this over. Even if I just go in here and just change the proportions, even slightly, let's say like I lower the nose and I raise the mouth, perhaps make the chin a little bit bigger. I've already got some type of exaggeration, at least exaggeration of likeness going on and I can do a slight nudge and a slight change with any of these and come up with something that's actually very specific. Uh, and then, of course, you can imagine how uh, connecting and, and mixing this way of thinking with this way of thinking gives you pretty much like unlimited uh, options that you can work with. Uh, but <clears throat> you might have noticed as well that all of these drawings were very flat. Of course, if you were placing, because they're from the front, but if you were placing the head at an angle like this, let's say, the same things generally apply, although um, you would uh, probably run into, I guess, more opportunities to work with uh, form as well, which I'll touch on after this. But if I wanted to exaggerate shapes on um, at an angle from a view that has more structure to it, I could still approach it a very similar way. So I guess I'll I'll use very round shapes here just to plop something in like that and of course th the same thing could be utilized if you're looking at another type of flat view like a profile view 
such as this. So this is useful in any sense, and, and um, of course, with any drawing that you do, you'll um, you'll have to look at it as you work on it in two ways. You'll have to uh, approach it both in a flat shape sense and in a three-dimensional sense. And I think this is also like more conventionally what you would find in resources that that concern uh, stylizing faces. But I think a more interesting way to think about it is with uh, the form and specifically with the planes. And so let me just pull up a 3D image here. Uh, and if you look at what's going on here, I'll just do something like this with it. So my face doesn't obstruct it. But um, <clears throat> if you look at the big planes here, um, you essentially, and I'll, I'll draw this out and cover the fundamentals of it because I think they're, they're less maybe talked about. But, uh, you know, you'll see similar types of constructions, both with Loomis and Riley. And then, like, um, Michael Hampton also has a type of construction. Hogarth has a type of construction. And they all are pretty much the same thing with slight uh, iterations. The the primary volumes, or not even volumes, but let's, let's actually talk about volumes first. The primary volumes that you have within the head are simply the cranium as a sort of a separate thing uh, and the face kind of mask that attaches to it. And this is simple enough. Um, but then, as with really any form, the big distinction that helps us orient and place this in space the most is the distinction between the front and the side, or in other words, an attempt to make it more blocky and give it a corner so that we can have, we can sort of reference it to a, a, um, a rec rectangular, like geometric form. Um, and we want to reference it to that form because we know that all of these uh, angles are 90 degrees and uh, we can only really be certain about a placement of any object in space if we know its orientation in the axes that are effectively established with the rectangular geometric form here. So that's the reason why we, to some degree, actually try to force th this distinction of the front and the side plane, even though in some cases, especially if the face is very round, it might not be that obvious. Um, and the sort of rhythm that happens to these um, angles looks something like this. There is a big gesture going through this way, and then another big gesture like this. And the way that Loomis describes this as is uh, as if you chop out, if you have a sphere and you chop out a little side of it like this, then a little piece comes out and you end up with a flat side. And that's a very good explanation because that's actually at, at the core of it how the uh, the cranium looks how the, how the skull is what its form is like um, and when those kind of connect you'll end up with this kind of a shape to the side and that can be quite confusing and I'll try to maybe um, as I as I develop the planes on this head uh, here I think I'll, I'll just work on this uh, maybe give a bit more insight because th this was one of the most difficult things for me when I was figuring out how to how to work with uh, heads and, and just their form overall. But what I have established is pretty much like this initial step. And then w what uh, happens with the front of the face is, or, or like the, the biggest forms that are kind of um, placed uh, on top of the, the front of the face and, and also to a certain degree like carved in, are this big plane the faces down like this that is the, uh, the lower surface of the, the brows or the brow ridge and then the nose. And, and these are really the, like the biggest forms that you have on the face and every other form that I'll place on top here, of course, first of all, just builds on uh, top of this foundation. So if the foundation is not solid when you draw it, uh, you're going to have a difficult time getting a believable structure on top. And th that's a, well, really why the foundation is so important. Uh, but if I add, let's say, the mouth here, it doesn't protrude ne nearly as much as the nose. If I add the eyes as well, they're much more of a surface form, and they also 
sort of um, are nested within that big depression that's created by this big surface. So it's very important to establish, uh, not maybe necessarily draw them out in this uh, obvious of a way, but establish these big planes uh, from the get-go. And these three structures that I've added here, the, the eyes and the mouth, are somewhat similar in their... Um, character because they're they're actually round and the, the mouth doesn't look uh, obviously round uh, but if you look at the structure of the skull and if you actually look at the profile of really anyone's face almost you'll see that the mouth protrudes and then the lips sort of come out and carve in like this so the mouth is if you break it down and really simplify it uh, a round form on which the, the smaller forms of the lips are placed. Um, I don't want to go much deeper into this. This is, was a very simple, a very rough breakdown of the simple forms. And the mouth, as well as the eyes, uh, the eyelids particularly here, are placed on top of those round forms. So that's another characteristic that they have in common. And my mouth is a bit low here. So you could say that this is the, the basic fundamental structure. Uh, the the little caveat here, or, or like a, a further breakdown, I guess, that I would want to mention as well, is that, um, of course, the nose has particular planes to it. It has a clear bottom plane like this. The nostril often sort of starts the face this way. So I'll, I'll just draw it out, and maybe this is helpful uh, just to see somebody go into it this way. The nostril will tend to look diagonally up like this. And th the nose itself as well, as a structure, isn't simply this kind of a prism, but it's also, uh, this is pretty much like modifying simple forms, which Antonio talks about a lot in the in the classrooms. But I, I modify a simple prism and expand it here to end up with a diagonal plane that faces like up and, and to the side somewhat like this. And this also isn't at 90 degrees. So so this is the structure of the nose. And then, of course, the uh, actual wing of the nose will sort of like come in, and, like both carve in and come out a little bit. So you end up with something like this. Um, and then that is uh, an area that might be somewhat problematic for some people. But uh, what was the most... And here is also an area that could be potentially like a bit of an issue where you get this kind of a stair effect. We have a bottom plane looking... This way, it's not necessarily completely looking down, but it's effectively the bottom plane of the chin. And you get the top plane, and then you get the bottom plane of this barrel of the mouth. And then that connects with what is now the top plane, which is the bottom lip, and then so on. And you get these stairs, uh, a pattern that looks like this. And there is a certain uh, wedging effect that happens here, which creates this type of a gesture to the chin and the mouth so you'll often have this sort of a I guess a crescent shape in here as the the chin wedges in uh, but those two are not necessarily <laughs> at least in my experience the most difficult part of the equation uh, and and they're also I think more intuitive to exaggerate with form um, as, as well as with shape but I think what would cause or what at least caused me the most issue were the um, the breakdowns and let's get this kind of a, and I think on the sorrow head would actually probably be better so I'll probably pull that up as well but th what caused me the most issue were actually the planes that are sort of in between the front and the side of the face uh, and particularly the fact that this plane here this side plane like side bottom plane I guess is at a like a very slight inclination is just a little bit strange. And then also the fact that the cheekbones have a very particular and a very strong structure to them. And what that does, if I can sort of draw it out here, is uh, first of all, depending on the likeness of the face and, it, and its structure in the sense of like body fat and, and like overall uh, bone structure, you'll get slightly different um, constructions or slightly diff different plane breakdowns would make sense but in general um, yeah the, the handsome squidward is actually a, a good a pretty good breakdown of this uh, I think what might be sort of um, confusing to some people is the fact that first of all there there is sometimes a bottom plane here and this will only happen if the person is has low body fat and 
also often if the person has strong cheekbones. And what also maybe helps clarify that is if I kind of drag this across, that's actually what gives the contour of the head, the silhouette, that's what gives it that shape. So even in the contour from a three quarter view, you get to see this plane. And then if I continue on with this um, cross contour with this line going across the surface, um, the jaw, and you'll see this quite clearly from the front as well, the jaw doesn't just come down, but it tilts, come down vertically, but it also kind of tilts diagonally in towards the neck. So you might end up with something like this. So it's not it's not necessarily like a completely vertical line. And that will depend, of course, the way that I draw the line itself as well will depend on the angle that I'm looking at. But what can happen, <coughs> again, is a breakdown like this, where the jaw actually, or, or the cheek, uh, the, the bottom cheek plane in this case, and, and specifically the, the bottom side uh, plane of the cheek looks down more than the jaw itself. And... I'm gonna complicate this just a tad bit more, and then I'll actually start like exaggerating these. Um, and th because just to sort of um, give a caveat here or, ex or explain uh, what my intention with this is, I, I need to uh, hopefully explain somewhat the building blocks, and some of you might already be aware of these, but um, in order to understand how we can stylize and exaggerate these, we need to just know how they would um, be oriented generically, right? So. Uh, if I have the planes and, and I understand their position in space, first of all, I can I can actually work with this form and I can rotate it and put it in different, uh, view it from different angles. Uh, but I can also modify and ex change the form itself. If I don't understand it, I can't change it. I mean, it it's somewhat obvious, but uh, what happens with the transition here as well, and this will, let me actually pull up a uh, skull as well simplified skull because because uh, the, the skull is where it all starts and I, I don't want to go too deep into this so I'll just uh, talk about that one other plane that I wanted to mention real quick and, and you know w when you look at like 3d models and sketchfab and stuff like that sometimes you'll get um, models that have a better structural breakdown and you should probably if, if you're looking to study these things you should find models that have like more clear and exaggerated uh, structures but what you can see here hopefully is that th the actual structure of the cheek here uh, the the bone itself is responsible for that bottom facing plane but what you might also see as well is that there's this other bottom facing plane on the on the front um, and that's just like another source of confusion so what can happen here, again, also depending on the structure, is that you'll get this type of a, and I'll need another color here, just to make it a little bit more clear, this type of a triangular, and that maybe it shows better from this view, but you'll get a triangular uh, plane that looks something like this. And its orientation is also quite specific because it faces, you know, more to the front than this, of course. Um, it starts to kind of turn around, and you can see that in here as well. but it also faces down, uh, so this might be, you know, what that uh, plane's orientation could be drawn out as. So all of this was to establish the building blocks, and then another, I'll just touch on a couple more. So of course this uh, curves around, and you know, we, we know this from experience that these are, this is not just a block, there's sort of in between blocks, but the distribution of these is not as difficult to grasp, I feel like, as with the, the cheek area. And then what also happens, especially for uh, males or people who have like a very strong skull structure, uh, but this is a, a characteristic of like male uh, skulls because they have, like males have more t testosterone, so the structures of the face will, or the structures of the, the bone that is, will develop more. So males will have like a more prominent brow ridge, which is like an additional sort of, um, I don't know what this kind of form would be, but it's like, let's say maybe a good way to describe it is like these additional like oval type of forms on top of the um, surfaces that face down here. And then there's also a plane break down here that sort of establishes a diagonal plane of the uh, forehead as well. And this front plane will often have a round gesture to it. So it might look something like this. And 
kind of similarly to what was going on here with an in-between plane. Now we have a front plane, sort of an in-between side plane, and then a clear distinct, well, well, this could be the diagonal plane and then a distinct side plane like this. Uh, so that was a little bit long-winded, but the reason why I broke it down like this is because once you have uh, an understanding, even a fundamental um, understanding of the planes, you can now start warping them and, and moving them around. So you can, I think a good way uh, to think about this and to conceptualize it would be to just take the points as, as if you were in a, in a 3D program. You, you just take uh, either like um, edges like this, edges between planes or like points as well, and you can just move them around. So uh, let me expand my canvas here. So what I could do, let's say, uh, with the planes of the cheek here in particular is I can go in I think I'll need to redraw this because it looks it's starting to look very very messy but if I place my form like this uh, since I have a knowledge of, of these planes uh, of course I can start with a simple breakdown but I can right off the bat start modifying them so I know that there's this break here and then I can not only based on shape but also based on volume ask myself what if I um, move it for example out like this and create a form that looks something like this and, and this might turn out kind of strange because I'm, I'm trying to just like come up with random ideas but uh, let's say I do that with the actual like uh, plane breakdown here right um, and I think this is actually useful because now I have a reference for what I'm talking about and then uh, perhaps if I add my nose and the nose is I think a pretty simple thing that you can modify. I can imagine like for example taking this side here and just move it down. So what I would end up with is a much flatter nose like this which I think could work pretty cool and pretty interesting with these very strong like very protruding uh, cheekbones. So I could end up with something more like this and of course I can also think about just from the front changing the shape itself. So I could maybe make the actual bridge of the nose very wide um, maybe this is the shape that I end up with and then perhaps instead of uh, having this um, ridge shape come out as well maybe I'll just like flatten it a lot so perhaps the orientation of that will now be something like this and then what I could do further to, to exaggerate it even more is let's say now with this big plane here the plane of the jaw instead of just having it come down slightly at uh, an angle maybe I'll just come very directly uh, and, and very like abruptly so that I perhaps end up with something like this and perhaps with with the shape um, having this rhythm come down to a, a chin uh, that's more narrow could be cool and with the chin as well like uh, instead of just changing its shape I could change the structure of it so I could take the whole chin form and pull it out like this perhaps end up with something like that and then maybe with the uh, the lips I can think about maybe pulling one lip out and keeping one very uh, flat so perhaps you know this might be what I uh, end up with and then I can insert that rhythm and yeah as Antonio mentioned in the chat the, the Riley rhythms are a very helpful tool because they, they um, I'm not very familiar with them. Uh, I'm familiar with what uh, like the the actual construction looks like, but uh, I think it's a breakdown that's particularly good in showing both the rhythms, as we call the rhythms, but also implying the the structures as well. Because a rhythm, uh, well, let's phrase it like this: the um, planes don't just break up in straight lines or in random lines for that matter they have a specific rhythm which I've pretty much been describing so the the Riley's uh, rhythm uh, model focuses more on those rhythms uh, and it, it's helpful for understanding like particularly what kind of shape the plane breakdowns have but I think there are it, I, I'm not sure how complete it is in, in like a structural sense. So hopefully this kind of fills in uh, that ga gap. But yeah, uh, diamond cheeks here. So let's say, and I'll do another one just for fun. 
Um, have you based uh, those cheeks off yourself, by the way? Uh, no, I have I have very flat cheeks. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> that sounds so strange. <laughs> <laughs> Your flat cheeks. You heard it here first, guys. <laughs> <Bruh>. <laughs> oh man. Uh, I think what I could do here as well is the, the orientation of the side plane here was very neutral, very vertical. I could play around with that. So I'm, I'm just like spitballing here and coming up with random ideas, uh, and that would obviously impact the actual uh, contour here. So. I think the takeaway here should be th to try and study both and when studying structure also um, understand it as a mechanism for achieving stylization and I ideally strive to create or, or you know deepen your understanding enough to where you can think both about shape and form at, at the same time uh, and that, that would be the the ideal. So you, I could, for example, both be thinking about like making, let's say, triangular shapes here, but also working with specific uh, planes and how I can drag those out. So let's do another uh, version here. And maybe I'll do the opposite. That could be interesting. Although um, here I was just exaggerating the distinctions between particularly the cheek planes, which is more obvious, but I think what I could do is, is just go the other route. So let's just start with a basic uh, mannequin as well. And if if you're actually working or on designing a face and um, coming up with a likeness, it's probably not a good idea to start off with a generic mannequin and modify it like this. This is more so just to describe the um, the concepts and in the the tools you have and you could do this just to sort of play around and, and exercise and try to see if you have holes in your understanding but uh, if you're actually designing you would probably want to start right off the bat with those shapes that you want to achieve but I, I just want to show the way that you can move and change things up and if I have the starting mannequin as it is then you can see the, like the change that happens with me moving uh, those planes so uh, in this case here I didn't really change much of the shape I, I could uh, except like making the the cheek kind of come in um, more narrowly towards the chin I think I'll go the other way around here and I think I'll make a very abrupt sort of change so y you can work with that tool as well um, it kind of looks like the uh, death mask or at least the, I'm not sure if it actually looks like it but it kind of reminds me of that like the death mask from uh, Darksiders but I could modify the shape like this now, and um, since I had this very uh, pointy, maybe I can have this a little bit more blocky. But I'm still, I'm there. There's still this, at least broadly uh, oriented in the same way. The um, I need to open up my OBS just to have an idea of what, because I'm moving around a bit too much. Okay, uh, but the, the planes themselves are still oriented. Um, the same at their core like this still faces up uh, you generally wouldn't want to have it face um like critically differently right so you wouldn't want to have a downward facing plane face up but you could have it face almost flat so let's just say i do that here and this would make the the chin like very blocky looking like this and since i had uh this uh, bottom plane of the the mouth barrel very flat maybe i can actually have that come out a lot more so that could be an interesting contrast between the sort of straight chin and then a very uh, protruding lip. And then I'll just make this flat, probably. It could be fun. Um, and I'll make this the uh, distance between the mouth and the nose. I think I'll make that very big, like that. Okay, and and, and with, with the nose in particular, um, you could get different configurations because there is a, a connection between the bone and the car cartilage which in some people um, will create a, a, an angle change so you could have a Roman nose with a bump I think I want to do that here um, since this was a very like wide uh, the, the idea was that we would have a very wide bridge here like the front plane I think I'll make the that plane very narrow like this and then maybe make these ver very wide so this is a, like a vastly different um, likeness, but 
it, you, you can't necessarily say that it's only based on shape. It's the, the thinking is also three dimensional, and I think I'll push since I made the the cheeks very flat and very tall as well here, um, and this would be the, the front plane of the cheek there, and you, you can see how that would also start to kind of uh, come around, and and it works with the the barrel of the mouth there and in here as well. If I added the front plane. You can see that that actually leaves, leaves some nice space for that round barrel of the mouth there. But moving on with this here, because my uh, cheeks are so flat, maybe I'll go in. I said it. Again. <laughs> I said it again. I'll make these very uh, protruded like that, and I'll also, in this case, since this is obviously a male character, I'll really exaggerate the form of of these sort of egg shapes. This is a very specific shape, but I'll exaggerate that, and I think I'll just make this, maybe I'll make the forehead broad, but very small, like this. And there's the side plane, and then I can also exaggerate, obviously, and change up the shape of the jaw. So I think I'll do that here. Sometimes you'll, you'll get um, a distinct bottom plane here. That also depends on like the amount of mass that you have, just like fat and, and muscle. So it's just a bit of a side note. And in this case, I'll make it very flat. So in this case, it's not going to go down like this. It's going to be very flat. So I think that would do it for the little lesson here. We can maybe... Uh, I wasn't really following the chat too much because uh, it's so difficult to talk about flat cheeks. Uh, <laughs> but if you there are any questions... Is that what you're saying? Oh, what do you say? You can't multitask. Yeah, that's yeah. I have an issue with multitasking. Uh, it's my it's a typical man. Low attention span. But if you guys yeah. have any questions now, you can you can post them in the Discord chat. Any deep questions about the particulars of the uh, plane orientation? <laughs> I don't know. How long left a lecture, by the way? Just so I know about when to the, ask for feedback. The lecture is pretty much Not done. Oh, okay. that was all I wanted uh, to in, talk about. In which case, guys, if you have any work you would like feedback on, you can post that now, and then we will get to it. Yes. Although I'll answer the questions first, because you know, you know. Yes, you know, yeah. You know, you know. yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> okay, Ellie, you can read the you can read the questions out. Are you so kidding me? Are you kidding? Yeah, because okay. then you'll be useful. But I stutter. Okay, fine. How do <laughs> I keep... I'm going to stutter more now. I've pointed it out. Like, okay. H how do I keep graphic 2D shapes consistent when I turn them in space? Yeah, that's uh -huh. it. Answer. Answer. Go on. Go okay, on. so sometimes you don't know how this stylized lip will look from a profile view. Uh, I think what really helps is... Um, well, there's kind of no way around it. You just have to um, I, I have the ability to rotate that shape or that plane um, on its own. So imagine, and this is really just like um, spatial awareness, but if, imagine that I isolate, let's say, these, these planes here. Let's use the, the green color in here. So I have this plane. That's not a good color, it sucks. Uh, like that, and I isolate that. And so it's something like this. Uh, and I have the other one as well, so that might look... And I'll use the, the axis, uh, the, just like perspective axes to help me with that, so I want to track it across like this. If I have the ability to isolate them like this, so in this case, we don't really see it here, uh, it might sort of flip around like that, but... If I drag it across, I'll have something like this. This is very strange. But uh, in, if you want to rotate the whole face, it, it's just very helpful to have the ability to rotate this on its own. So uh, if I rotate it um, like this, then of course this would start to foreshorten and it might look something like this. So it, it's just like, I know this is a non-answer. I'll, I'll give a bit of a, like a tip as well, but it, it, this is really just like my ability to understand a very complex um, spatial orientation and to imagine how 
because this plane is not it's not vertical it's not horizontal it's not um, conforming to any particular axis it's tilted at multiple axes and uh, if I have a good understanding of what the grid is I can sort of um, use that as reference and tell myself okay well this is and, and this is what I do as well I need to do this because that's the only tangible reference that I have is, is the axes so I'm asking myself how much does this stray from a horizontal how much does this stray from a vertical when I'm trying to figure out what a uh, plane's orientation is and then based on that I can rotate it a, a little bit easier but you know this is a very difficult skill uh, a helpful thing to note is that this improves over time especially with faces you, you'll draw like millions of faces so you'll get used to how a shape turns and you won't have to think about it so much but ideally you would have the ability to work very or to sort of understand and work with very abstract both forms and just like plane orientations another thing that's helpful is just in, in particular with the profile view but also in general is just to track the center line and ask yourself what protrudes so in this case if the center line is uh, like this then the profile view essentially is just going to be the center line seen as a silhouette so you'll end up with maybe something like this and that that is very helpful with profile views but if you're talking about let's say rota rotating it the other way you also can think about the the center line and i think that you'll note very quickly when you start working with form is that if one if a thing protrudes from a profile and you rotate it towards a front view it's not going to appear as deep because we're looking at it flat head on so that's just like another intuition that you'll develop but based on their center line if you rotate it and based on just your understanding of simple forms you should be able to guess that it's not the center line let's say in in this angle that's rotated because i just took this and and turned it this way the center line will now look a lot flatter like this whereas previously it looked more like this so hopefully those those couple ideas are, are helpful but at the end of the day you still have to so just sort of like grind your understanding of how these planes are oriented in space. All right. Uh, there's another question. Um, the person said, the person, I'm sorry, that sounds so rude. <laughs> but they say, um, you mentioned not starting out with a, a generic mannequin in some cases. Could you elaborate a bit? Uh, yeah. The, the reason why I said that is because um, in particular, when you want to design an interesting character, it's usually a good idea, as with anything really, if you want to design good shapes, it's usually a good idea to start with shape and then add form on top of it. And, and this is a pretty broad principle that I think applies generally to drawing. When you start drawing something, you will usually lay in the shape of it rather than the structure of it. Of course, you will have an idea of the structure inherently and, and you can't necessarily separate them completely. But if I want to design this guy, let's say, <laughs> me starting with the structure isn't, it's not going to be the initial read. It's not the first read of this guy. The first read would be actual shape, which modifies, of course, as, as we were talking about here, based on its orientation, uh, which is, again, why you, you can't necessarily divorce the shape and the structure entirely. But if I want to have a good um, design, a, a good like graphic or shape visual design, I would probably want to start with the shape first, just so I establish that. And, and just so I'm certain, so I'm not like shooting in the dark, because this was like shooting in the dark and just kind of like making a Frankenstein monster with just inserting different elements and um, adding a structure, a fully uh, realized structure separately and, and doing like just structure by structure doesn't give you the full idea of what the, the actual likeness and the, the whole visual impression of the image will be at the end it doesn't give you that idea early enough but if i just go in here and without necessarily worrying too much about the structure if i just lay in those big ideas say you know this is something like what the design will end up looking like i can then come in with the structure on top and make it more concrete but i i'm at least more certain and, and have a better uh just like visualization of what this will end up being which is why I said, like, you wouldn't generally want to start with the, with the generic mannequin. You couldn't use the mannequin as reference, sort of what I was doing here when I was uh, comparing these two. And it, you can always have that. But if you want to design something that 
you'll, you're sure will be, or, or that you'll have a good idea of what it will turn out uh, from the get-go, then you want to start with like simple shape, at least in my experience. All right. So yes. uh, I think that's it for the question. So now we can move on to uh, feedback. All right. Uh, let's see. The first uh, submission is from Logix, and they have a very nice sheet here. And I, I have to say, it's pretty already, it's quite solid already. So I don't think there's a, too much to say. Um, there's only like a couple of small things that I want to point out, but it, it's again, I'm, I'm nitpicking a little bit because I already quite like this and it's, it's pretty solid. Um, but the first one is the back foot. Um, it doesn't seem to be in the correct perspective. Like it looks a bit flat and uh, warped a bit. I feel like that's just, it, it's lacking a bit of structure and, and that could be an easy fix with um, even just the, the distort tool or something like that, just to put it back into a position. Um, and the second one is that, oh, actually I've lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, the hair, the hair looks a bit flat, so, sorry. <laughs> yeah, um, again, but, <laughs> It's, I'm nitpicking here because like it's not a big deal, but if you want a bit of um, fluidity in the hair, uh, you can make it look a bit less stiff. Because like hair isn't actually like uh, stiff like that. I mean, it could be a stylistic choice, but but yeah, and there's not a, there's not too much to say on this. Um, maybe a more interesting gun design would be cool. And uh, yeah, I mean that's it really. Just yeah, that's it. What do you think, Opie? Uh, yeah, well, I, I agree with, with the points. I think when it comes to the, the hair, the, the issue is essentially a lack of overlapping of the big forms. What you have is, and, and by the way, I think the, um, the color options are very nice. Like, you pretty much have uh, almost like complementary schemes with, with these two, or at least like generally analogous with a pop color. I think that works well. Um, I think what could help also... I'll, I'll get back to the hair, but um, you could kind of, even though this is a good accent, you can take a, a weaker, uh, like a less contrasty version of that color that you have and use it as a um, an element to create coherence throughout the design. So if you have this saturated in this light of a blue and you're working with something that's maybe darker here, maybe you can just desaturate it a little bit and use it as a little bit of a pop, maybe even a rim. Um, you know, you would, you would have to figure out particularly where you would want to place this detail but if you do that then uh, <laughs> because this already feels quite like a like a costume in, in like an actual sense like a full uniform i feel like that would make it even more coherent even though it's not necessary and i think this here this scheme here shows the, the principle quite well where you have the uh, accent color it's not on the inside of the cloak it's on the or yeah, well, the cloak, yeah, it's, it's on the outside, and then you have it repeated in a couple of places. You could do it more subtly, like this, and you could achieve a similar effect. So that's one thing when it comes to just, like, the visual design. I think, overall, the, the whole design is nice in terms of the, like, coherence, the, the shape design as well. You have these elements that are repeated. I think it works very well when it comes to the hair, uh, circling back to it. I think if you just leave some space here to draw... If you just take the big shape and overlap it, something like this, you know, have a have a T overlap here. That that pretty much solves your hair issue, and then um, at least uh, the big um, form of it. And then when you add these smaller ones, I would also worry a bit about overlapping. So, for example, here it feels like they're just flatly pressed against each other, whereas maybe having this feel like it comes back more like actually doing another T overlap and maybe this would be the cross contour then if you did that and you could still maintain this kind of a stylized um, form with, with no actual hair sticking out no, no texture of the hair necessarily but if you had that element of depth perhaps this front one more clearly overlapping here kind of look like Drenny in my drawing kind of look like like the Drenny uh, tentacles or something but if you had, they had more roundness and more overlapping I think that would that would solve uh, the issue uh, so so that's that's a note on the hair and then I think the the final note would yeah you could you could also when it comes to the uh, the gun maybe uh, I think it works well as it is like 
if this was a separate design, I think it works fine. You could try maybe a, use one of these round shapes. I don't know what these are. Like, it looks like kind of like caps. <coughs> you could try and, of course, the, the barrels themselves would look round from the front. But in this iconic view, maybe you can try and include that somehow. Perhaps even in the, <coughs> the shape of this uh, trigger thing. Uh, or, and you can also maybe include it, I don't know, here. Any, any place. <coughs> and it would just... Uh, Hopefully, the, when I cough, it's not like blowing up your uh, your eardrums or something. But I think that would make it more um, like just a little match and more with the design of the costume. And then the final thing is with the uh, this design. And I'm not a I'm not a Mac guy, but from from my limited um, Mac experience, it feels like it would the joint here I think would just need to be a little bit more clear because it feels like <coughs> if, if the, the arm was to bend these shapes would hit it and I think you should just try and make it clear that this sort of like there's sort of a cut so that they can just like slide across so it's, it's essentially like a, a disc and, and then you have the arm there and it moves up and down um, on the on the elbow joint, so that's just like a little note there. I think like the back probably works because it's it's really like uh, an elbow guard or something like that. But the front is just a little bit unclear in this area. Uh, but yeah, I think those and and yeah, what Ali mentioned about the foot. I think the issue with it <coughs> is that it's sort of difficult to tell. Like, does she stand on this place or like is this the heel? Uh, I think just having a stronger shape like this and maybe making this more flat so it's actually the heel would have her look more grounded uh, but i think like, overall the forms look really nice the way that you've um like mirrored them in different views it's, it's very it feels very coherent so i think um like, these are just like a couple little things but hopefully they help okay that's all i have yes yeah yeah uh now we have a submission from jesus like jesus himself <laughs> Um, I can't so, critique that. Yeah, you can't critique that. You'll go to hell, man, if you do. <laughs> no, okay. um, sorry, that was it. Um, all right, so it's some sort of uh, brute design. Very, very cool, first of all, so good job. Um, there's a, a couple of things that I want to point out. Uh, the first is the, the, the tusks or horns coming out of its uh, helmet or head. Um, the one on the body gets lost in the silhouette. Now, to, to fix that, all you've got to do is extend it out of the silhouette and that will read much better. Um, but you have to be careful to have it not tangent with the um, horns on the arm at that point. But you just move things around and it, it should read better. Um, and then the, the, the boulder that is attached to the chain, there's two things I want to point out with that. Like the first is... That chain is very, very thin, and I'm nitpicking a little bit here, but that wouldn't lift that. I mean, that would make the chain bulkier, more stylized, and you could really, like, play with, like, the, the chain shapes and stuff like that. Use, like, big, medium, small, and just make it just a bit more interesting, you know? And more believable as well. And the second thing is, I know you've tried to uh, have the, the boulder okay. sort of in half in the ground, right? Um, but there isn't a ground there to really see. Like, I feel like it sort of breaks the silhouette of the piece it makes it um look a bit awkward like it isn't complete now i would just fix that by drawing the entire thing right and like just maybe playing with a some more big medium small shapes with like the spikes on it and just drawing the entire thing out because i feel like that would help uh tell us like a viewer what it is and like what he's meant to be using it for rather than it looking a bit incomplete um but yeah they're the that's the like the, the two main things that i can point out with this um i get okay actually the other one is the 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 front leg um it looks a little bit like there isn't a knee there and i think uh mainly that's just the, the angle that you've drawn it um i'm sure ogden will be able to point out specifics if he knows what i mean um hmm. but yeah uh, they're the uh, main points i want to say yeah i think the the first point that ellie had is a great illustration of 
and a great answer to the question of why you wouldn't want to start off well, in the context of drawing faces with a generic mannequin and then in the context of drawing anything else with primarily form and this is a like a difficulty that I personally have as well it's sort of a hard balance if you're a more drawing oriented designer and and if you work more with line it, it's like well I can only like pray that my horn will come out at a pleasing enough angle and at a readable enough angle so it, there's no like easy way to go about it except just stopping yourself and and checking the um the visual at uh, like a flat silhouette or just a shape level and if if <laughs> well yeah if you just have this come out i think that would solve it well um then with the boulder element I, I think you don't necessarily need to draw it out the the reason why you might is because round shapes uh, particularly like completely perfect circles are very attention grabbing this could be a very strong because of how like just like perfect they are i guess like there's something about how much attention a circle grabs as opposed to like for example a completely perfect rectangle or something and if you do include the full shape of it i think it would be more iconic and it would read more easily but something in between could be to actually have it just like mostly show and then having a more simplified shape for the ground for a start and then also maybe having some indication maybe something like this of the ground like that and then you know that could give maybe even some cracks or something it's not a very good drawing but that could give context on on what's going on uh, there and then i think when it comes to um this is sort of related to what ellie was saying but not not entirely <laughs> i feel like the uh, the gesture of the the creature is a little bit stiff in the in the legs particularly, and it also feels like <coughs> it's something that I, I talk about quite a bit. Like the the torso is short, uh, but I feel like with that specific of a decision to make this like almost feels like a bug with how round the torso is. I feel like you should probably go further just to make it really clear. Like this is not just a little bit short. This is like clearly I intended it for this to be very like a very short torso, and then I think going along with that you could probably make the legs a little bit shorter as well. So I guess if I was actually doing this, with a little bit of thought behind it, I would just move the whole thing up. I think that could be like a, a cool, like more um, intentional I think design choice rather than making it like somewhat short but not not like very obviously short uh, when it comes to the bottom part of the legs or the the body i think i would probably just have a stronger like s curve here so maybe like have something a bit more like this especially with like how much this comes out the uh, like the the horns those are not horns but the claws i think that that would help and maybe with this leg as well if you had a bit of a stronger uh, well, knee shape, but also just a maybe a C, uh, well an S curve like this, that might uh, help. Just draw this in to see what it looks like. I think that would that would look better, uh, like that. And then, yeah, the the, the I think that I'll just end it with this. Um, <laughs> it's a little bit unclear. The biggest issue definitely are the horns when it comes to clarity, but it's also slightly unclear uh, what's going on here. The silhouette of the um, hand is is not very iconic at all. Like you don't actually have like a fist shape that you can sort of latch onto, uh, and th that's what I figure is going on here. Is is being held by by a fist, maybe like this. And I think the best way to solve that would be to just simply move it out, move the whole arm out a little bit. Um, I I really don't like giving this like because it's pretty much done and I'm like okay just like move everything it's not, it kind of, it's kind of annoying especially when you have lines and flats so you have to like change two layers but if you move it out uh, like this and show the actual shape especially if, with a very specific kind of design to the the glove or what is effectively the glove like if you have stuff coming out like this you really need to show the shape and maybe particularly the thumb and how it connects like this in order for this to like breathe and be understood uh, more clearly 
So those are like a couple uh, little design pointers. I think overall though the design is very, very coherent, very well connected. Like kind of similar to like the previous one, uh, the first one actually. Like kind of feels like a uniform, but but in a good way. Like it's it's very uh, um, nice. So I think that's that's everything that I would have in this one. Okay. Thank you. Right. <clears throat> of course. And now we have uh, Halcyon. Uh, he's still on his phase one uh, for oh. design. Uh, and this is a, a villain. Oh. What? Oh, hang on. Um, okay, I thought it would be okay to give feedback to Halcyon, but uh, Antonio has just informed me that it may not be appropriate. So I thought it'd be fine, but I don't. I guess we can't risk it, right? So, unfortunately, oh, I... <laughs> I guess we can. Um, oh, is it because of the themes, like the the YouTube stream? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Let's um, do that one after this. Yeah. Well, I guess we could end the stream right now as well, because we've already given um, like three feedbacks at this point. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So we can do you, but not live. So. Yeah. Oh, that's how. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh. <laughs> All right, let's end the stream here then. Yeah. Uh, Ellie, you do the outro. Ellie, you, oh, okay, yeah, okay, you do okay, the oh, outro. Oh, so I don't, I don't get the intro, I get the outro. Okay, well, yes. <laughs> fine. Okay, well, that's it for Teaching Tuesday, guys. I hope you enjoyed uh, today's stream. If you want to see more, be sure to sign up to Artward and join our, our Discord community, especially if you want feedback on your own work from Ognin and I. Um, so yeah, that's that's everything. Oh, and All subscribe right. to Antonio. <laughs> yes, awesome. subscribe Thank to you, everything. Ellie. All right. <laughs> Thanks for being here, guys.